conversation online with the hashtag ready for webinars. Please remember this session is recorded and the recording will be made available via our YouTube channel after the event. Also, every participant will receive a certificate of attendance. Please submit any questions um, in the chat box and we will answer these at the end of the session. Without further delay, I'm excited to hand over to Dario and Mel, who are going to tell us about building confidence in PT academic and adapting from IELTS. Over to you, Mel and Dario. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. I think we're both looking and wondering who's going to speak first. So I'll take the moment. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining this morning. My name is Melanie. If you haven't met me before, Melanie Drake, and I am the Teacher Training and Resources Manager for the English Assessment Portfolio. Daria? Hi, I'm Daria Usil and I'm part of the PTA Academic Team in Melbourne, Australia. I'm the Client Services and Training Specialist. I'm really happy to be here with you all. Okay, so I guess we'll get started. Um, today's session is Building Confidence in PT Academic, Adapting from IELTS. So here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we'll look back at the history of proficiency testing. So you am going to have a look back at that. We'll compare test formats, PTE and IELTS, and think about how our teaching practices can be adapted. We'll touch a little bit on scoring and then go over some preparation resources that you can use in the classroom. Over to Mel. Thank you. So whether you're completely new to us today or you've been working with us and we've support, been supporting you for some time, um, here at Pearson we're experts in English and assessment and we're really, really proud to be the world's leading education company. So we have a range of courseware for second language learners and with that comes our assessment portfolio as I mentioned a moment ago. We also have a series of professional development and uh, services for our teachers uh, globally and um, this is all underpinned by our very own global scale of English. And this is a framework to, to plan, teach and measure uh, English proficiency. I'll let you move on Daria. Great. So I thought we would start this presentation by having a quick look at the history of English language testing and also I guess teaching in that um, it's not often that we really think about, you know, why do we test English or where did it come from? So I took a few little key touch points and put them together on this slide for you. Um, if you look back and we start off with, say, the 15th century, King Henry V used English language testing with his royal correspondence to see that they were speaking the correct, I guess, King's English, you might say. Um, and then in the 16th century, we started to see actual books related to teaching and testing English and being an English teacher. But in the, uh, I think it was the uh, 16th century, Cambridge University was actually the first institution to create the first standardised English test. So, you know, they've been around for a long time and I know a lot of you would know about Cambridge and their English tests. Then moving on to the 1960s, um, oh, actually before that, I think I've skipped one, in the early 1900s um, in the US, the US Department of Immigration started using an English language test to control the number of students that were coming into study in the US, which is really similar to what we do today with migration and with study. Then in the early 1960s, we saw more formal approaches or structures to English testing. Um, and a lot of those focused on knowledge and grammar rules. So really, really deep into the grammar. As we progressed into the 70s, 80s and 90s, um, a lot of that changed and we, we started thinking about, well, how, how do we teach English in the class and what context do we use English in? We wanted to make it more relevant um, and, and test functional ability of English, the so real ability of English. Um, and so that kind of led to the communicative approach that we see in a lot of classrooms today. And I know that English tests have tried to mirror that and sometimes they're successful and sometimes not quite so much. So we'll look further with that with Mel. Oh, I'm going to change the slide. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of letting you do the work. I'm the controller. I'm going to the, the controller. So thanks for that, Derry. It's actually really interesting to see that the mapping out of, of the changes in the history, I think, as teachers, we, we don't really put a lot of focus on that. And we should probably talk about it a bit more because we'll have more yeah. attention where we are now but so on a similar theme let, let's talk about where we are today and of course where we're going as well so as we've progressed and as we're continuing to progress 
you'll know as teachers that we've seen far more communicative based approaches in terms of how we're teaching in the classroom. There's a lot more authentic testing in the market now, and, and our own teaching has really, really taken off to meet these demands. Um, and of course, we've seen the input of technology and, and how we're having to pivot um, to sort of on a practical level, change the type of platforms we're using to enhance our lessons and the way that we're doing this. Now, computer delivery has vastly changed the way that we test our students and the ability that we have now to test in different locations all around the world has really sped up over the last few years. Computers um, are now assisting with how we score tests as well. So we can do all sorts of things like make our tests shorter um, or more focused perhaps. And they also allow us to score multiple skills um, at the same time, which is something that we'll focus on a, a bit about today. Um, and within that, we can also mimic how a teacher um, would score um, a test. And, and this allows much more time for the, the teaching practices rather than just the testing, which is a challenge that we uh, talk about all the time. Now, it goes without saying that the, the pandemic um, that we've been through this year and we are continuing to still go through, as a result of this, we've seen a real shift uh, to more at-home testing. Um, options like proctoring um, and online interactive platforms really taking off that as teachers we've had to sort of spin around quite quickly to get a hold of and, and feel more comfortable with. Um, so despite what I would probably call some sort of emergency teaching style that as, as a teaching community we, we've really had to, to um, shift quickly to, to meet these demands, I do actually think um, that the pace at which testing and, and as a result our teaching is evolving is a really, really exciting thing and I think we, should, we need to keep that at the forefront of our minds. Daria, I'll let you go to the next slide. Great, thank you very much for that. Okay, so we're going to have a look at comparing tests. I know it's a little bit difficult at times, sometimes it feels like comparing different language tests, IELTS, TOEFL, um, what have you, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It, it can feel like that sometimes. But fundamentally, um, English language tests are built on the same guiding principles as outlined by Bachman and Palmer. And you can see some of those principles there. Test developers consider the following areas when they're creating, uh, when they're trying to meet objectives um, or, or meet the needs of the test and the test taker. And they want to ensure that the test is useful and fit for purpose. So I think all test takers, sorry, let me say that again. I think all test developers really start in the same place. You know, they, they know what their test should achieve, but they do take different approaches to meeting that achievement. Test, um, test developers can ask themselves questions like, you know, are these test questions authentic? Is the content we're using authentic? Um, is it contextual? You know, is it functional? Are we testing functional skills? Um, is the scoring um, reliable and can it be interpreted by not only students but also by um, institutions that are using those scores? I have to say I really liked what you said there about comparing uh, apples and oranges. I, I'm going to I'm going to steal that and use that the next time I talk about comparing. Oh. Love that. Thank you for mentioning that, actually, because I, we, we use the apples and oranges um, analogy quite a lot. But uh, a great way to think about it is, you know, if you think about a fitness test and if you had two coaches that were testing someone's fitness, one coach might decide to have, um, you know, a person run laps in order to test their fitness. But another yeah. coach might decide to have someone do jumping jacks and, um, and push-ups and do some cardio workout. They're both testing fitness, but in a different way. That's the yeah. way I like to about it. I think as teachers it's a great way to, to look at that as well. All right so getting into the heart of this session a bit more now um, we're actually going to take two tests to compare so we've chosen our own test PT Academic and we're going to do a bit of a comparison today with IELTS. Uh, we know many of you might be familiar with IELTS, so we thought it was a good comparison to do, particularly if you are going to be um, doing any prep classes for PT Academic um, now or, or in the near future. So uh, one thing to mention, I would say, um, and many of you already know this, is IELTS can be chosen, it can be taken as a paper-based test or it can be done on a computer. With PT Academic, this is a fully computerized 
this. There isn't a paper-based version of it. Um, if I take IELTS first, if you look at the structure, um, pretty self-explanatory there. You can see that the four skills that have been broken up, four sections of the test. Uh, the main difference to notice here that the speaking section at the bottom there is actually done on a different day. And the speaking section is done with uh, an examiner as well. So I, I believe that you have to do that speaking section within one week of the, the other version, uh, the, the other sections of the test. Um, but just to make it um, very clear that, that it is separate from the other parts of the test, that speaking section, you go and do it on a different day. So ultimately, there are two sittings to complete in your IELTS paper. Daria? Okay, so PTE tests the same four skills. Um, however, the test is taken in front of a computer from beginning to end, takes about three hours. Um, the sections, same sections are tested, but the times are just split slightly differently. So we, as you can see that the times for PT Academic do vary, and that really depends on the number of items that the test taker is presented. So each test taker does get a variation of items and they're all randomised. So now we're going to look specifically at each skill area and compare the tests. So let's start with speaking. So like Mel said earlier, um, the speaking section of IELTS is done separately. It may be the same day, it may be the next day, but with PT Academic, it's done in the one session in front of a computer. So I think speaking is the section of the two tests that people really do compare, and there is a little bit of difference. This is where you probably see the main differences. IELTS is done in an interview style where the test taker speaks to an interlocutor and they're asked a whole variation of questions. Sorry, I'm just saying, can you hear that sound or is that just me? I, I think it's just me. So my all good. <laughs> it might just be my microphone, uh, actually, or something. There is a slight noise. Okay. And I think, no, while Derry no, is speaking, can you Doesn't turn, matter. turn we'll your through. mic on mute or could you turn your volume down? While Derry is speaking, it's just I think we're picking up a slight. Yeah, uh, sure. Let me put myself on mute. Yeah, so all to turn your volume down while Derry is speaking or something. It, it, it's you. always really strange how you can hear yourself back and it just slightly, like, it just rings in your ear a little. <laughs> all good. Okay, so, yeah, we're talking about the interview style of IELTS. So it is an interview and it does feel more realistic, but really, um, I think, you know, the throughout the task, whether they're general questions that are being asked or some more um, broader ideas, the, the interlocutor does hold all of the, the power in the, in the conversation, so they are directing the conversation in certain ways. So that's just one way of testing speaking. PT Academic takes a bit of a different approach. Uh, we have five different items, and in some of those items, test takers are, are reproducing spoken English, and in other items, like retail lecture and describe image, they're um, creating their own responses. So they're having time to think about it, and then create a response. So some things are really immediate, where you will hear a prompt and you will respond, and other questions give you a little bit of thinking time and you, you, know, you produce a response. So I think it's important if you are teaching um, uh, IELTS and PT Academic to kind of really do a little bit of that comparison of the item types and to know what the item types are. So your best place to then help students um, know what they're trying to achieve. So I thought it might be good to have a look at two, two separate items, and I've chosen one IELTS and one PT Academic, and the top one you can see there is a described image item where you've given a chart or a graph or an image of some sort, and you need to kind of read and understand what this is trying to explain. So you have to talk about the image and draw some conclusions or implications about that. The bottom one there is an IELTS task, which is a discussion. So you've got some topics and questions that you need to think about, and the interlocutor will ask questions and the conversation will go back and forth. So if we think about some of the skills that are needed to complete both of these tasks, they're quite different, but actually some of the skills that are needed are very similar. So for example, you both need to know, for both tasks, you need to know um, what's the purpose of your speech? What are you, what are you doing? Are you explaining something? Um, are you describing something? You know, there's different reasons why we speak. You also need to support all those opinions with details and examples, you know, start off with a topic sentence and really pull out the discussion a little bit. You need to organise your ideas in a logical way so that the person who's listening can really follow along. 
And in that also, you need to produce fluent speech and think about your pronunciation, um, your intonation and word stress. So both of these tasks really do require this, this type of skill. And just don't forget that these aren't skills that a test taker is using just for this test. They're skills they're gonna be using in lots of different other places. Okay, moving on to writing. So I think if we look at these two sections, we've got IELTS, which is 60 minutes and has two tasks, task one and task two. Task one is a very similar task to what we just saw previously in PT Academic, the describe image. This is the same kind of task, but test takers need to actually write their response. And then we've got an essay task. PTE is also very similar in that it's 40 to 60 minutes, again, depending on the amount of questions that a test taker is presented. And we have two tasks. One is a summary task where you're given a text and you have to summarize that in one sentence, no more than 75 words. And then we have another essay. So for both of these tasks, a test taker may get one or two of these items. One thing to actually also point out is for um, IELTS, you've got a couple of different types of essays, but for PT Academic, you've got only an argumentative essay or persuasive essay, and the time, uh, the word number, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? The word count for both of them is about 250 to 300 words. Okay, so we're gonna have a look again at the skills and strategy that both of these tasks require. So you've got that summary task at the top, like I just described, you've got a text, you need to read it and understand it and write a one sentence summary of up to 75 words. It doesn't have to be 75, it can be less, but that's just the maximum. So you're looking to write a complex sentence, you know, with lots of ideas that are joined. And then in the IELTS writing task, very similar again to that describe image task, you've got that image there, you've got to analyze it, and, and write down what, what it's showing and what it's explaining. So for both of these tasks, you're doing similar things. You're organizing your sentences and paragraphs in a logical way. And for the PTE task, you're only writing a sentence, but it's a longer sentence and it still has to be in a logical form. You're synthesizing information. You're, you're bringing things down and drawing it together to write your summary. You need to, again, support your opinions with details and examples and explanations. Again, very similar to what we saw in the speaking section that's required for both skills. You need to use words and phrases that are appropriate to context. So think of all the different vocabulary that, that brings it together. Think of synonyms and, and you know, if you're doing a, a summary task, it's really good to try and you know, mix up your vocabulary. And then you're also using correct grammar and spelling and grammatical um, mechanisms, essentially. So you're thinking about how these skills can be transferred to your students. You're not just thinking about the test item, think about the skills, because these are the skills, especially for people who are going on to university study, these are the skills that they need, and this is what they need to be taught. And the test, I guess, test preparation is part of that, but it's going to take them forward even further than just the test. All right, moving on to reading, I'm going to pass it on to Mel. Thank you, marvellous, Daria. Yes, yeah, so I'm now going to go through the reading and the listening part of the paper. And um, I hope that you will have started to notice, particularly if you're a teacher, wh whether you're all already working in, in test prep and, and you're familiar with um, high stakes tests, um, not necessarily PT academic, but you will have noticed that while the item types and the structures of these individual tests, as we talked about, apples and pears, are different, um, there is a lot of shared themes around the strategies and the skills that you're going to be developing in your learners within the classroom. So hopefully this is good news. It means that you're not starting from scratch if you are going to be moving around or adding new tests to your repertoire. Um, a lot of the work may well have already been done and these are transferable skills for you actually within the classroom. So I do hope that's good news for you. Um, but without further ado, let's have a look at the reading paper then. So um, I think the main point to pull out here, reading is generally out of all the sections of the test, fairly self-explanatory for us as teachers. 
Um, but if you look here, the timings are really somewhat quite different as well as the input of text. So IELTS, um, we've got a one hour reading section. Now there's only three input texts, so three individual texts and 40 different questions. I think that's the, the main thing to mention and to remember there. But if we move across to the right and have a look at um, our PT Academic here, you'll notice that the reading section is shorter time-wise, but we actually have a different text um, and a different question for every text. So more input texts and less questions. In terms of the, the task types and the skills, I mean, I mean we're still going to have multiple choice there. We will always have multiple choice within a reading section. There's still going to be some kind of matching and reordering, and there's still going to be some type of completion. Now, what that means is that there will be similarities in the types of skills we're developing. So if I'm just going to pop on to the next slide, let's have a look. So um, we've taken, um, just as you saw with Dario's slides earlier, we've taken um, an IELTS question and a PT academic question below, just so you can see the similarities. Now, in this particular case, they're both called mul multiple choice single answer, quite simply because, well, that's what they are. So it's exactly the same type of question, just presented in a slightly different way. Um, so that means that the skills that you're developing in the classroom will be identical, which, which is great news for us as teachers. So let's have a look at some of these skills needed then. Um, for a multiple choice um, question around a reading text, obviously you're going to be focusing on the meaning. You'll have your learners read the text. They're going to be tested on their understanding of academic English um, in, in a reading test for, for both of these papers here. So they're focusing on meaning. They're going to be identifying main ideas and points purpose, tone, attitude, um, skills like skimming and scanning, whether it's for gist or whether it's for specific details, you're obviously going to be practicing this again and again in the classroom. And they can do this outside of class as well, picking any type of reading content they can. And of course, inference as well, inferring meaning from the text, even if it's not said directly. Listening then, okay. So having a look at the listening paper, if we take IELTS first, of course, um, you, you've got a half an hour paper and then 10 minutes at the end so the, the test takers can scribe their answers onto the answer sheet. So four different recordings, 40 different questions, okay? So the recordings are going to be mostly on academic subjects if, if you're doing the academic version of IELTS um, and it, various different conversations and monologues will be listened to. Um, if we have a look at PT Academic, however, you'll notice that there's going to be more input again, more variation of recordings and not just variation, but actually more recordings. So you get a different um, piece of audio for every single question. Uh, what you'll notice in IELTS is that you're going to have um, only four recordings and much more, um, many more questions. So we're not saying it's better or worse, it's simply just different. Um, and again, of course, a range of different recordings on our end, all from authentic academic sources, I'll add. So in terms of the task types, yet again, some differences and some similarities. There will be some multiple choice and some matching. Um, the main thing to notice here is that there is an integration of both listening skills and, of course, then writing skills. Um, that, that integration of the two skills there, exactly um, as you'd expect both ourselves and the learners um, to do in, in a real environment, whether it's at work, whether it's at university or just um, integrating with people in normal life. Okay, so uh, we've to, to talk about the shared skills and strategies here, as you can imagine, um, there's quite a lot of crossover there. So we've taken two different tasks um, to sort of highlight this. The first one is the IELTS note completion task. If you're familiar with IELTS, I'm sure you will have had lots of fun working on this question with your learners. And ultimately, um, what, what we need them to be doing is, is putting, um, thinking about different word groups and how that can help us um, zone in on what the right answer could be. So for example, ticket price, it's obviously numbers. Um, venue, it's obviously a place, events, titles, this sort of thing. So at least the word groupings is what they're going to, to be um, thinking about. And then at the bottom there with PT Academic, we've got a summarised spoken text where the learners are going to listen to a short recording, take notes and then write a summary or a paraphrase of what they've heard. Now, obviously here, these are quite different types of tasks, but the, the shared skills and strategies, you know, 
as we've already mentioned quite a bit now, there's a fair bit of overlap. So within both of these question types, you can expect to be having the learners identify words and uh, phrases that will be appropriate to the context of the recording. They're listening for meaning and, of course, identifying specific details, uh, facts, opinions um, and note taking. Uh, for both of these, you'd expect uh, the test takers to be taking notes while they're listening and using these to, to, to come up with hopefully the correct answer. Okay, Dario, I think it's back to you. Yes. So I think, you know, if you've been a teacher for a while and you've used some of the Pearson resources or um, you've seen how when we're teaching our students about different skills, we, we don't get them to produce the response straight away. We tend to build on knowledge. We tend to scaffold. And this is just one little excerpt taken from an um, expert PT academic course book. So this is one of the resources that is specific to PT and, and available for use in the classroom led by a teacher. So for example, you know, we've got a little activity here about um, when, when students are speaking and, and they need to put pauses in between word um, sentences and in the correct place, you know, you might break up a chunk of text into sense groups and all these little tasks here where you, you know, you look at an example, you analyze it, you see where the pauses are, you listen to the audio, you find those pauses again, you try short sentences and you're building on this knowledge and this information before you then try the actual practice item. And you will do this repeatedly because that's what we do as teachers. We, you know, we, we practice these responses. So, um, you know, you've probably had experience with this yourself and you can look at resources such as expert PT and bring them into your classroom. So we're gonna to touch a little bit on scoring. I'll pass it back over to Mel. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to mention there that I think a slide like that is really great just to show how we can use our courseware to um, all these skills and strategies that we were just going mm. through there. On a practical level, this might look in a, in a lesson. So I think that one page of there um, kind of mapped that out for us really nicely. So thank you. Um, yes, as Daria mentioned, we're going to touch really briefly on scoring. This isn't going to be a big focus, um, but I felt it was something that it, 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 that that sort of highlights a big difference between the two tests. And since we've chosen PT Academic and IELTS, I could not mention something about it. So let, let's just remind ourselves that for IELTS, that the speaking and the writing sections of the paper are of course marked by uh, human examiners, where in PT Academic, all sections of the test um, are marked by our automated scoring system. Now, Briefly here, let's just have a look at the score report, okay? Now, everybody's going to have a different score goal, and this will dep be dependent on what you need the test for migratory purposes or what institution you're going to. But if you look on the right-hand side here, what we have in a, is an example of the score report um, you get when you take the PT academic test. This is delivered to you um, online and is effectively a sort of certificate of your performance. So right here, we've got the test taker score of 80. This is that overall score, nice and clear. Now, given that the PT academic point scale is from 10 to 90, 90 being the best, 80 is a, a very good score indeed. She'll also get, in this case, it is a she, um, the communicative skills, listening, reading, speaking, writing, and a score for these. So you get a really good idea of the strengths and weaknesses and where they lie. And as well as that, we've got a skills breakdown. So the communicative skills that I've already spoke about, as well as the enabling skills like uh, grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, etc., and a spread of uh, strengths and weaknesses there. Um, we also map um, our scoring against our very own global scale of English, which I mentioned as a framework to plan, teach and measure English proficiency within Pearson. We're of course also aligned to the, the European framework as well as aligning to other high stakes tests like TOEFL and of course IELTS. Move on to the next slide. Now, um, as I said, our automated scoring system is something that I think is really quite a marvel. So I wanted to mention it really briefly today for all of us if you're not familiar with it. So this is a system um, in terms of how we mark uh, test takers when they take the paper. It's a system that's based on very complex algorithms um, that I won't, and as a result, I won't go into too much detail um, in, but they're trained by 
testing a data sample of over 10,000 students with over 120 different native accents. And so this process, sorry, there's a lot of sun coming in here. This process gives a much more analytical, um, more objective result um, than humans do. But don't take my word for it. I've got a very brief video to show you. Now, just to manage expectations, I think it's only about a minute and a half long, if that. But um, this will really put everything I've just said there about scoring into context. So please take a look. And I think, Daria, at this point, we need to mute ourselves, don't we? Yeah. At PTE Academic, we use AI for one very simple reason, to make the most unbiased English test we can. But how can a computer assess language as well as a human? Well, AI scoring means that it's not simply a single human assessing your English, but a very clever algorithm that mimics how human markers would score based on many, many responses. It all starts with our team of expert test developers. They create tests that reflect real-life scenarios, not just multiple choice questions, but essay writing, listening tasks and storytelling exercises. We then ask hundreds, sometimes thousands of people from all around the world to answer the questions. Each response is evaluated by experts who rate them on things such as use of language, content or pronunciation. These expert ratings become the sample data for our computers to understand what kinds of responses deserve what kind of marks. This enables the machine, using AI, to imitate the expert ratings and assign human-like ratings to responses. Put simply, that means that when you take our test, what you say or write is instantaneously compared with hundreds of previous responses and how they were scored. And because our test is built around state-of-the-art technology, it can be simply delivered and taken anywhere in the world, giving consistent scores every time. So when you sit down to take the PTE academic test, you're taking advantage of an algorithm that doesn't simply evaluate your skin colour, your gender or your shoes, but that cleverly evaluates your English on its own merits. It's simple, really. Actually, maybe it's the opposite of simple. Clever. Great. So it is really interesting to see that, you know, with this technology, unlike a teacher, it never gets tired, it never gets weary, it never gets sick of marking, you know, 50 papers after one after the other. You know, it can do the scoring for thousands, thousands of people, which is fantastic. Okay, let's move on. So we're just going to touch briefly on the preparation resources that teachers can use in the classroom. So we do have a range of different resources. And the first one is what I spoke about earlier is expert PTE. So these are two course books that can be used at the B1 and B2 levels. There's 10 modules um, in each of the course books. So it can be used for a longer course over, you know, um, 12 weeks, for example. It's designed to be used in the classroom and there are additional resources, um, activities that can be used with the course book. And they're available on, on the website as well. So you can go and find them. And we've also got a My English Lab component. So as well as doing stuff in the classroom, you can assign work to be done at home on My English Lab, which is fantastic. If you want to be um, using a different course book or you're familiar with some of Pearson's other resources like Speak Out and New Language Leader, these can also be used, especially New Language Leader. It's really, really great for students who are going on to academic study. And we have some courseware mapping documents. So you can be using New Language Leader and you can find all the different items that can kind of highlight where PT academic questions um, would work. So you've got some summary questions and it'll tell you which page these summary questions are on, um, some you know, reading uh, multiple choice questions and so forth. We've also got some ready to use lesson plans. So these are 20 different lesson plans, one for each different item type. And each lesson plan gives you three strategies that can be used to approach that question. So they're all available on our website as well. So you can head to PTE, pearsonpte.com and you will find them in the teacher section under organisations that they're ready to use. It's great for a short course, I think. And we've also got a new resource coming out, which is really exciting. It's the new official guide to PT Academic. So if you're familiar with PT, you, you'll know that we've had a, an official guide for a while, but it's been revamped, which is fantastic. We've got some great resources that go with it. And the really, really fantastic part is we also have a, an official guide for teachers to use as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Anything to add on this, Mel? 
sorry, I was muted, so I didn't make an echo. Yeah, um, I have to say as well that the official guys, so, so this is going to be due, so it's had a really fantastic makeover, um, and the pages are just beautiful, and because it has a separate test taker and teacher version, it's definitely something worth taking a look at, so please do um, look out for communications around that. But the lesson plans too, I mean, not all of you are going to be in a language institution where you're following a set course book. And we all are in, you know, we all have quite uh, different situations and how we are delivering our prep. You might be doing it from home with one-to-ones or virtually. So do consider the lesson plans as well, because they are a fantastic resource. Whether you're using a course book or not, sometimes you get through the pages and you need something else. 20 individual lessons there and it's just other ways more creative ways that whether you're working with an individual learner or a group that you can really start to um, hone in on these strategies um, for, for de development so that they're going to be more effective in, in answering the, the questions so yeah I'd encourage you to really have a, a good explore on our teacher resource page and use everything that is there because the overwhelming majority of it is absolutely free so please do have a look. Great, I've just popped the lesson plans in the chat box if anyone wants to check them out. All right, I think we're on to our final slide. For some reason I can't get it to move. Can you flick onto that one? Yeah. Oh no, we've got one more resource. Actually, this is a fantastic one to be using in the classroom. It's our scored practice tests. So these are a three hour simulation of PT Academic which test takers can do at home or even in the classroom. They um, are really easy to use and you can just take them on a regular computer and it goes through the same kind of process as a test taker would when taking PT Academic and they actually get a mock score report after they complete the test. So we've got four tests available and they can be used as part of a course, which is really fantastic. There's also a set of sample questions that can be used as well. And we have an offline downloadable practice test as well. And this test actually has some lovely um, sample responses. So you can use them in class to analyze, you know, and think, why is this a good response? Or why is this not, not as well? And how can it be improved, really? Yeah. I have to say, with the downloadable practice test as well, it's a completely re free resource on our teacher resource page. Um, I always think the first thing I want to do, particularly if I know I'm going to be teaching um, a test that I don't know too much about, the first thing I want to do is see what the test looks like, look at the format, have a feel for the questions, actually even how it looks on the page. So I'd encourage you, um, as one of the first things you do, to have a look at that, particularly as, again, as I said, if you're perhaps um, teaching solo, you're not part of a group where you have access to a bulk of practice tests and, and course books. So um, I think it's a, a really, really useful starting point. Oh, back to me. So um, <laughs> let me, I'm on my sort of penultimate slide, I believe. In terms of teaching resources, um, Daria has spoken quite a lot there about all the, the various different um, things you might want to um, take a look at from our, our website. To save you time, in the interest of saving you time, on, on the resource page, you'll notice a little button that says, check out our teacher preparation pathway. This, this is, you know, this is what it looks like. It's a curated PDF where we've basically brought together all the, the resources um, from the website that are in different areas, put them all in one place for you, and you simply just need to click on the link and it will take you directly to it. Okay, so the, the PTE preparation pathway, it's called, on the teacher resource page. Now, if you're completely new to PT academic or perhaps even high stakes testing, you would go to our familiarize um, route there, which you can see on the far left. And this, what we've done here is we've given you um, all of the resources together and a sort of suggested order of how you might want to um, use and, and read more. Again, learn. If you're, perhaps if you are familiar with our test, but you need some skills training and you want to learn a bit more about our scoring system that I've touched on in the video, you would take our learn route. And finally, when you think you're pretty confident and you're ready to start delivering a prep course in the classroom, here's what you can use. So please do go and check that out. I hope it will save you a lot of time. Um, on a, a final note here, something that we're really excited about is that early next year, we have a completely online teacher training course for you now. 
open that can be taken anytime, anywhere, and you can follow these six individual modules at a pace to suit you. So regardless of where you're at, even if you've been teaching PT Academic for quite a long time, there will be something there for you. Maybe you just want to do our, perhaps, you know, you want to upskill a bit around the, the writing section of the paper, or perhaps you want um, more practice uh, scoring some speaking and writing items. Um, if you're at the other end of the scale and you're brand new, go first to module one, which is our introduction to the test and automated scoring. So keep your eyes peeled. This is coming early next year and we're really excited to launch that. We hope that it's going to be a product that will support you uh, fully wherever you are. Um, and yes, coming early next year. So keep your eyes peeled. Completely free as well, I will note. Completely free. <laughs> OK, I think we're on the last slide. So just to wrap things up, before we take some questions. Here's a few thoughts that, that I'd like you to go away with. Focus on the transferable skills. Now, in this case, I'm actually talking about you and your transferable skills. We've spoken about uh, test prep here and how while you know we can think of comparing apples and oranges, um, there are a lot of similarities here. And you will notice that you as a teacher, actually, we speak about transferable skills a lot for students, but also for you as a teacher. If you have been working in test prep at all, you will have developed a lot of, a lot of transferable skills in terms of skills development with your learners that are applicable to PT Academic, to IELTS and to other high stakes tests. So don't feel that you're starting from scratch. You've already done a lot of the work. Do remind your students as well of everything that they will gain just simply by preparing for this test. Um, I think there's a, a sort of a bit of a misunderstanding or it's easy for the, the learners to think that all this work they're doing is simply just to get the score they need for this test. That's not true at all. Um, the amount that they will learn, the amount of exposure that they will have to um, authentic academic English with all the sources that they're, they're reading and listening to and responding to is going to greatly, greatly enhance um, how they can um, interact confidently and competently in a real English language setting, whether it's at work or in a social situation. So please do remind them of this because it should be very motivational for them and it gives them a lot more purpose. Finally, um, I'd like you to think that um, the support is there if you need it in terms of the resources we offer you, but there's flexibility there if you don't. So you can access everything from our teacher resource page and of course go and check out our new teacher training course early next year. But you can also uh, use our resources as a basis to create and adapt your own materials that work for you in your classroom with your learners. So do keep in touch, head to pearsonpte.com where you can learn much more about us and see what's available. On social media, obviously follow us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and join our community of PT academic teachers worldwide. You can join up to the group here. Here's a link there. And I think at this point, we're just gonna go on to some questions, if any have come in. Yes. Gary and Mel, that was a, a great session. Yes, Mel, go and sort out uh, that stun before you are uh, <laughs> quiet. Yeah, um, just now. to forward on, so we've had, uh, Dara, you already forwarded on the, uh, the teaching lesson plans. Just to let you guys know, that's currently pinned at the top of the chat box. Um, so that is the download, the 20 downloadable lesson plans. Um, and then somebody else has asked about um, score guides. So I've just sent a URL for the score guides, uh, which are and in the chat box as well um, and this is a url relating to the form that we will be sending uh sending you uh afterwards so this is some teacher resources um, related to that uh, 2021 teacher training project um which we would like to um, involve you with so uh down to some questions mel and uh daria we got um one or two lighter ones and then um then one or two others so um do you know how many candidates take the exam annually? How many candidates? Oh, I, I honestly wouldn't know the exact number. Okay. Um, we are now market leader in Australia and New Zealand, so we are getting quite a few test takers these days. Um, but globally, that, that's a bit of a difficult one for, I think, Mel and I to answer. Sure. Uh, what we can so. certainly do is we, we will be able to find out from you how many the numbers that we had last year and, and give you that information um, offline. Nice one. Okay, brilliant. So um, uh, we've got a, two, two questions here I'm going to link together. Um, and that is, 
What's the eligibility to attend the PCE test, ma'am? Or rather, is there any eligibility to attend the PCE test? And following on to that, um, is there a target customer for PCE? Um, yeah. So that is, is there an eligibility uh, yeah. to sit the test? I don't think there is. It's rather... No, no. Really, exactly. the test taker just needs to think about what scores do they need? What what yeah. am I trying to achieve? Am I using this for study or am I using it for migration? And you know, what are the score that is what is the score that's required? Um, and then once that's available, then you should think about, oh, is this a test for me? And this is where a scored practice test really comes in handy. You know, before deciding to take PT academic, try the scored practice test. It costs a fraction of the real cost and it will give you an idea about how you'll score and if this is the right test for you. That's, that's what I thought the, uh, the answer was going to be. Like. So the other one, um, I'm going to rephrase this question. The original was, when are you conducting a webinar on how to score 79 plus? However, uh, I'll rephrase that as um, perhaps can you suggest some resources um, that can help test takers achieve the highest scores possible. Do we have a test takers resource bank or how, how could somebody best prepare themselves for the test? Um, is it perhaps looking at previous webinars we've given on the PTEA or is there, a, is there an area on the website that we can direct people to in how they can best prepare uh, for taking the PTEA test? Do you you know, I can answer that. I can answer that. So, really, if you're trying to achieve the higher end of scores, it's um, it's a really matter of thinking about well, where is my current level of English, and what am I trying to achieve? We do have a lot of free resources, and that's always the best place to start. So, I would head to the preparation section of our site. So, if you just go psnpte.com forward slash preparation, you'll see all the resources that we have out there. It's a matter of going through them all. And and even if you see something once, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do another, you know, another part of our preps. Or it doesn't mean you shouldn't access another part of the preparation resources because it's good to repeat things and really internalise them. If you're trying to get those higher scores, sometimes it can mean going to a test prep provider and doing a course with a teacher. So a teacher can kind of really guide you in the direction of, the skills that you need or the, the improvements that you need to make to achieve that score. Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning as well, I'm sure test takers are probably aware of this, but um, your, your entry point for preparation for PT Academic is intrinsically linked to your uh, level of English proficiency currently. So if you are already at a very high level, you can actually just start your focus on the item type preparation, you know, specifically around uh, drilling practice for the test itself. But if your English level um, proficiency is actually quite low, you also need to be working on that at the same time. So um, it's really about a bit of a self-diagnostic and seeing where you are in terms of your overall ability. Would you agree, Daria? Uh, sorry, I was distracted by trying to put a link okay, into okay. the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so ultimately, um, it, the, the test taker does need to sort of take a little bit of ownership for that first. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Well, um, we actually had a couple of sessions uh, on how to score your highest mark in the PT. So please do check out the schedule. I just shared um, the link in the chat. And we had an assessment day on Tuesday. So have a look at the schedule. And then you can catch up with any sessions you've missed by going to our YouTube uh, channel. And I'm just posting uh, the link to that. now. So first we'll go to the schedule, find out what session it is you want to catch up with. Um, the assessment sessions were on Tuesday of this week. And then the, um, and then the uh, playlist uh, link is there on uh, so um, we haven't had any more questions in. Uh, we are at time. So Maria, uh, Daria, Mel, uh, thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for, for presenting the session and for putting it together. And thank you to all of you attendees uh, for joining us today. Uh, it's great to see uh, so many of you here and it's great to uh, have such high engagement from you. Certificates will be sent out, um, recording, uh, Recordings will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. 
And please look out for the virtual goodie bag that will be sent to you after the session. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, and we hope to see you at another Pearson English webinar very soon. Goodbye and have a good rest of your day.